The number of deaths globally from coronavirus has gone over 3,000 after dozens more died at its epicenter in China and cases have soared around the world with a second fatality on US soil. The virus has now spread to 62 countries. There was some good news from China this morning. It has reported its lowest daily number of new coronavirus infections since late January. However, it is spreading particularly quickly in Iran with more than 500 new cases confirmed today. The number of infections also continues to surge in South Korea, the total there rising to more than 4,000. The head of the religious sect that has been linked to about 60% of South Korea's cases has apologized for the spread of the disease. This is Lee Man-hee admitting many people had been infected. He said it wasn't intentional. And as you can see, he got down on his knees before reporters. And here in Europe, in the last hour, we've heard from the head of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen. She has announced a corona response team and said the risk level in Europe had been raised from moderate too high. Let's take you live now to our correspondent in Hong Kong. Robin Brandt is there for us and to Milan. Bethany Bell is there. Robin, if I could start with you, can you explain more this some good news we're hearing from China about the infection rate? Yes, so the rate of uh, new cases has fallen. That, of course, is positive. The number of uh, new deaths as well, that has gone up by 42 in terms of uh, compared to the figures 24 hours ago. But what's most significant uh, about those is that all those deaths occurred in the province of Hubei. That is the place where this all began. Uh, there are no new deaths across the rest of mainland China, according to these figures from the government. And as we say every day, we have to rely on these official figures from the government. So that seems to be yet fresh evidence that the draconian measures put in place essentially to lock down that province of uh, Hubei do appear to be being successful in terms of trying to prevent the spread, the further spread uh, across the rest of uh, China. Now, a meeting chaired by uh, this country's number two politician, Li Keqiang, in the last 24 hours or so, has talked about wanting to see the agricultural sector return to normal, no unnecessary restrictions on ploughing. So they're trying yet again to get the economy, to get this country back to normal. But at the same time, uh, Li Keqiang uh, urging that those tough restrictions in place, particularly around Hubei, must remain. Bethany, to you in Milan, are there draconian measures still in place in northern Italy? Well, the Italian government uh, a few days ago quarantined um, a cluster of towns uh, in Lombardy and one in Veneto, uh, a measure um, affecting about 55,000 people. Uh, those people are still in quarantine. That's where the, the epicenter of this outbreak occurred. Um, people there were asked to stay at home within those areas and not move out in an attempt to try and uh, stop the spread of this contagion. Um, the authorities say that uh, more than 1,500 people have tested positive uh, for the virus, uh, but they say uh, the vast majority of those have shown slight symptoms or, um, or uh, no symptoms at all. 34 people have died and around 140 people remain in intensive care. Robin, there is growing concern around the world on many levels. One of the key ones, of course, is the financial impact, the economic impact of the coronavirus. What has the damage been so far to China's economy? Well, it's been uh, severe and that uh, impact has been confirmed today uh, by the results of a survey carried out by a private institution, Keixin, of businesses, of factories that showed that new orders and production of factories across China, remember, the world's second largest, uh, largest economy, took a significant hit in January. And that confirms uh, what we saw in official government figures that were released uh, on Saturday, both suggesting a significant fall uh, in factory uh, production the most significant, in fact, for 16 years. That's when records first began back in uh, 2004. Conversely, though, we saw a bit of a rally in uh, Asian markets today, and that is because, particularly if you're in the real estate sector or in the infrastructure sector, you are now uh, very strongly of the belief that central bankers, both here in China and perhaps beyond, uh, will have some kind of enhanced stimulus measures to come uh, to try and help the economy recover. But there's no doubt the impact on China's economy in January is is severe. Look, people aren't going to work and they're staying at home, but they're not going out shopping either. It's that simple. Briefly, Bethany, is Italy's economy taking a hit too? 
It's a matter of very big concern for people here. I mean, just in the tourism section alone, there have been a lot of cancellations in hotels. Um, people uh, have cancelled trips here. Um, and also there are warnings from economists that uh, this, if this carries on for much longer, Italy's fragile economy could be tipped into recession because, of course, this outbreak has occurred in northern Italy in the great powerhouse of Italy's economy. But in one bright spot, small bright spot here in Milan today one of its main tourist attractions the cathedral which you can see behind me has reopened to tourists and they're now allowing small groups of people to visit in but uh, there have been appeals by politicians here in Italy for people to still come and visit saying Italy is safe to visit. Bethany thanks for joining us from Milan and Robin in Hong Kong as well good to have you both with us. Well, as we've been reporting, there's been a sharp rise in cases of the virus in Iran. Some 500 new cases have been confirmed there, up from less than 1,000 on Sunday. There have now been 66 deaths there in total, including a member of the country's high-ranking council that advises the Supreme Leader, Ayatollah Khamenei, or Rana Rahimpour from BBC Persian, is here for us. Can we trust these figures, Rana? Not many people believe these figures, including uh, the, the MP from Rasht, which is a city in North of the country. He says that these figures sound more like a joke. Uh, he said that the situation in the city of Rasht is, is very serious. All the hospitals are full. They're running out of beds for, for the people who are ill. And he said that these numbers are just a joke. He doesn't take them seriously. Unconfirmed uh, reports, unofficial reports that the BBC Persian has managed to uh, get hold of says at least 210 people have been um, um, uh, killed by the virus, but the Iranian officials have denied these reports. So the health services in Iran probably can't cope, we can imagine, with they these kind of numbers. They definitely can't cope. And the, the reports we're receiving, don't forget that at the moment there are at least 27 provinces across the country. There are, in total, there are only 31 provinces in, uh, in Iran, and 27 provinces have reported cases of the coronavirus. So clearly they don't have enough infra infrastructure, uh, infrastructure. They say they have they deployed 300 uh, groups to, to fight the virus, but it seems that it, they won't be able to cope. How confusing is it for people to be getting different sources of information and not no, really knowing what information they can trust. It is very um, confusing. M many people uh, turn to social media or foreign-based Persian news channels, uh, but it's very difficult and people are confused. They don't know whether they can buy masks or they, they, does it matter to wear masks or not. And if it matters, they really can't get hold of it. So uh, the, the whole uh, the country is seriously worried. Rana, thank you very much. Thank A very you. worrying picture there in Iran.